Okay, finally in this movie on CSS, I want to talk about links for just a second. Everybody knows what a link is. You can put a link on your page using the A tag and you simply give it an href attribute of what page you want to go to um, and uh, put some text in there and you have a link. And as you can see in this example, I have inside my body tag three links very easy. I have break tags at the end of each line, and I have a link to Google, a link to Yahoo, and a link to Wikipedia. You know, not, not complicated stuff. Okay, now real quick, let's look at this, how this renders on the page. Let me uh, check out here. Okay, this is what a link looks like. Everybody understands that. And we're going to talk about how we can style these links a little bit and some fancy stuff we can do with them. And we're going to kind of do this throughout the semester and get more advanced each time because there's a really a lot of interactive, um, a lot of power with your interactivity of how <clears throat> your design is going to work, of how these links are displayed. Okay, you can see that, and you know, everybody's pretty familiar that in most browsers, the default um, is that links are underlined. So if I have a link inside a paragraph, I can tell it's a link because it's underlined. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the browser defaults to some really boring, ugly colors. You can see that I've visited all these websites recently and they're all purple. Normally they would be blue. Well, why are they purple if I've visited them? It gives you a visited, st a visited state. So <clears throat> basically if a user has a whole page of links, they can see at a glance what they've already been to because it's purple. Okay, everybody's familiar with this. Okay, so basically there's four states to any link and they depend on what you're doing with your mouse and whether or not you've been to them. And so a link state just as is, is known as a link, okay? The other thing I can do is I can hover over a link and the default doesn't change anything, but there is a state when I put my mouse over something, I can have it look differently. Um, then also if you, and you can check this out in your own browser, if I click and I'm, not, I'm just gonna click down and hold down, see it turns red release that side. Um, that means it's active. So that's the active state. Okay. So I can say search on Yahoo. That's kind of a minute detail. And obviously these are purple because I've visited them all in this browser recently, but uh, normally it would be blue. So, you know, I really am not really crazy about the default states of a link. So let me show you how you can change those using CSS. Right now, what we're going to do, let's go back over the HTML. I'm simply going <clears> to <throat> drop a line into the body and let's, let's, we're going to use a tag target here. So I'm just going to say the letter A and uh, what I need to do, this is traditionally how we affect a tag. We type the name of the tag, which in this case is going to be the letter A. It's the A tag or anchor tag is what that stands for. But remember, we've got four states we can deal with here. Okay. And so what you need to do is you're going to have to put the name of the state afterwards. Right now, let's make all four states do the exact same thing. So I'm going to use them in a real shorthand here. Let me show you how you do this. Okay. First of all, I'm going to say a colon link comma a colon active and then comma a colon visited comma and then finally a colon hover. These are the four states that I'm going to be dealing with. Now, why have I put commas in between them? We've looked at attributes where I don't put commas. Well, I can blow off the commas and it means one of two things. If I put commas, it basically says, here's four items. You're going to give these the same style. If I don't put commas, what it's telling the browser or via CSS is that inside a link, all the links that are active, all the links that are visited, it's going to look inside of each element. Okay. So let me just show you real quick. If I wanted to uh, target a specific element that was inside of something, I could say body uh, div p, and then uh, you know put put a style there. This would affect. Okay, let me show you the difference. This affects all the paragraphs inside a div inside the body tag. Okay, so if a paragraph falls outside of a div, it wouldn't work. Uh, it wouldn't, these styles wouldn't affect it. But if you put commas in between them, then whatever styles I put in here affect all three of these things. All the body tag, the div tag, and every p tag on the page. Okay, so anyway, so that's the shorthand explanation. Let's get back to the subject at hand here. I have the a link, comma, a active, comma, a visited, and comma, a hover. What I'm going to do is let's go in and let's just say, let's change the color to black and uh, let's go back over and we'll see what that looks like. I'll just change the color to black. Let's say I don't want those to be underlined necessarily. I want the link to come along and my text is one color. I just want the link to be a different color and that's how people will know it's a link. Okay, let's come back over here real quick. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, the underline is known as text decoration. So you can say text dash decoration and I'm going to set, say none, N-O-N-E. Okay. Go back over 
and there we go. There are several states to this. There's underline, which was the default. There's none, which is what we've got now. And there's also strike through, things like that. Let's go back now and let's, let's call the color red. Okay. And generally, I'm going to be honest with everybody here. When I'm working on websites, I generally don't have a separate state for the visited or the active. Those are just less important to me. Uh, usually what I do is I will keep all these except the hover state. I do like to manipulate that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this hover state and let's delete it for a second and also delete that comma. Okay. So right now what I'm saying is I'm going to have the color red and the text decoration set to none and they're going to be for these three links. The, the a colon link comma a colon active comma a colon visited. Okay. So those are all going to be red. The text decoration is going to be none. Let's drop a line and let's just assign a style just for that hover state. So let's go a colon hover. Okay. And then put my curly braces down, drop a line. Now let's say uh, color is going to be blue. Drop a line and let's say text decoration is going to be underline. Oops, underline. Now we'll go back over, refresh the page. You can see all the links are set to red and when I move the mouse over them now, they affect the hover state. They underline and turn blue. Pretty cool, huh? Obviously, this isn't a screamingly wonderful example of uh, what you can do with this, but that does tell you how you can you can set up your hover states. And like I said before, um, or I may have said before, I, I typically don't, honestly, I don't create separate active or visited states. I could do that. You would have four styles for all of them. But uh, to me, the visited just kind of mucks up the design a little bit. And uh, the active state is only when you're holding the mouse down on. So I typically don't bother with those. We're going to talk about some more ways to address links. It could be you want different links on the page to have different interactivity or different appearances. And, and we'll talk about that in some later examples. But uh, anyway, that's, that's how you address links. So hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you next time.